what happens here in this city of Coimbatore. The reason being, it's a tri-accounted fight and perhaps for the first time around, wherein the DMK, the ADMK and the BJP all have fielded strong candidates and are at loggerheads. The fate of the BJP in Tamil Nadu could be decided by the fortunes of K. Annamalai, who goes head-on with Singai Ramachandran of the ADMK and the former mayor of Coimbatore, who's on the DMK ticket, Ganesh Rajkumar. It's an interesting fight. As usual in Tamil Nadu, this time around, across the state, even in Coimbatore, the women outnumber the men. But we will focus on the first-time voters. We'll try and understand from them what's going on, what is their man ki baat. So join us on this fun journey on a hot, hot day, just counting down to the big polls here in Kowai. Kambatur is the second largest city in Tamil Nadu and it's going to have its fair share of first-time voters or young voters. Now, how are they going to define the pattern of voting here? What is going on in their minds in terms of the issues that actually matter to them? Here I am inside the campus of the PSG Arts and Science College in Kambatur or Kowai. And let's ask the students here. I've got the boys here to my right and I've got the girls to my left. So let's ask the ladies first. Hi, what's your name? Mohana. 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 Uh, are you aware there is some election heat or this time you feel there is not too much activity at all? No, uh, I should offer a lot. Huh? It's, this is not enough. This is not enough? Yeah. Huh? There should be more. Yeah, there I should, expect more. You expect more. Okay. So wh what are the issues that you as a youngster are looking for? Um, mostly gender equality. I meet more. Yeah. Huh. So you are looking at the issue of gender equality. Yeah, yes. Has any of the leaders spoken about gender parity or gender equality? I don't know exactly. I'm I don't know. Yeah, you have not heard anybody. You have not heard this being talked about, right? No, sir. No. Climate change is an issue. Does it matter to you? No, sir. No. Okay. What is your name? Swati. Swati. So what matters to you, Swati? Sir, I am not voting this time. You are not voting this time. Why? Not voter ID. Oh, not yet. You don't have a voter ID yet. But you're looking forward to vote. You completed 18. Yeah, you've not yet completed 18. So she's not going to vote. So if she's got to vote, what does what should you look what should she look for? What's your name? I'm Sharmila. Sharmila. So you are eligible to vote this time? Ah, yes, first time. First time. Are you going to vote? Yes, sir. Uh, are you are you sure who you want to vote for? Sir. In your head, are you sure who you want to vote for? You don't need to tell me. No, sir. I'm not decided because it's so. It's so what? Tell me. Come, come, come closer, all of you. Yeah, it's so what? Because no one can. In Nobody is talking to you? Nobody is addressing what you want to do? <laughs> no sense. Huh? Uh, I'm so confused, sir. You are confused. Okay. Are you, is any of you also confused? Anybody here confused like her? Or you have clarity? What's your name, ma'am? I'm Kavya, sir. Kavya, Kavya. Are you voting for the first time? No, sir. Second time. Second time. So, you know the difference. First time when you voted, you voted for what? Uh, the state elections? State elections. State elections. So you know the difference between state and national elections? Yeah. What's the difference? How is it different? It's different because of... Uh, hmm. State issues, national issues, you think there is a difference or is it the same? I think it's same, sir. You think for you it is the same? Yeah. What was the issue for you? What would you like your neta to address? It's not issues. Huh? No issues. No issues. You are happy as things are going on. You don't want anything. You are not expecting anything. Huh? No big deal. Huh? All is all is well in your life. Yeah. So if somebody says you must go and vote, why will you go and vote? It's our duty. It's our responsibility to vote. Uh -huh. So it's your duty, responsibility to vote. Uh, any of the others, first time voters, all of you? Yeah. What's your name? Shweta. Shweta. You voting for the first time? Yes, sir. I am voting for the first time. Uh, so you believe it's your duty to vote? Yes, yeah, sir. It's our duty. It's our rights to right to vote. But is it also not your right to understand why you are voting and who you are waiting for? Yes, sir. Uh, we have to vote the right person and right uh, responsibility person to, uh, hmm. in the act because uh, in future, uh, uh, like uh, they can say they can uh, what to say. 
they cannot uh, whatever they promise they may not do uh, it and yeah. they may also change the yes, party sir. and they may go to somewhere else yes sir that's also possible but what is the issue that matters to all of you if anybody wants to say what is the issue that matters to you when it comes to the national elections central elections my issue is uh, that uh, education system sir yeah the education system you want it to be better yes sir yeah what and you want somebody with a plan for the education system like uh, more practical than the theoretical hmm more practical experience than yes, theoretical let's ask the boys girls come here together okay hi uh, how many of you are going to vote this time <laughs> all of you all of you first time voters yes. first time voters ha huh? who is the former mp who is the current mp of kovai do you know no sir do you know the current mp of kovai you don't know do you know the three candidates in the fray three main candidates for this election now you know when you know when the polling date is 19 19 polling date you know okay do you know the three parties who are contending each other okay ha therinjidum theriyadhu nu solreenga ha you are getting said no idea no idea you don't know who your three candidates are uh one is anamali sir yeah. and then two candidates i don't know sir the other two candidates you don't know so you don't know there is singai ramchandran and there is ganesh rajkumar who is a former mayor of coimbatore so these are our three candidates now is there a difference between state election and central election yes sir what is the difference yena difference you know you want to speak in tamil speak in tamil no problem ha uh, yena difference what is the difference between state election and central election no idea ha no idea don't you think it is different chief minister chief minister select pandrom so uh, state election uh, so pm select select pandrom uh, parliament election parliament election parliament. correct but uh, state ka agenda nation ka agenda vyathyasama irukum la it will be yes. different right state agenda nation it will be. that much you have for clear yes, okay what should be the agenda for you guys ninga vandha tomorrow you are going to graduate you are going to become post graduate so i'll take this question to you also ladies what do you think should be the agenda for you if somebody has to come and say listen i have a plan for you what should be part of that plan enna irukano enna vishayangal irukum what would you like addressed quality, your name quality of education quality of education yes. uh, what's your name jai silan jai silan jai silan second person to say quality of education yeah sir so to control traffic uh... traffic ease of traffic now ease of traffic is a national issue local issue or a uh, state issue local issue local issue no so then that should that but still matter at a national issue uh in medical field they should uh, develop some more some more something more in medical field you want i would like to say another one important point like uh, uh, agriculture agriculture hmm. is more important for in in this country correct so this is uh, this is want to change and grow next level in agriculture yeah. so agriculture la innum pannu sir you are saying modernize agriculture lots from the agriculture agriculture yeah. more expectation you guys what do you want sir technology the, huh? points of like huh? points of Uh, on to grow sir okay on to develop the our uh, uh, employment skills uh, and uh, okay so arts and science you saying te- employment skills you think something should be done in technology more opportunities where do you think what do you think you want to be sir uh, more employment opportunities more employment in what what kind of employment opportunities sir in tertiary sectors hmm? tertiary sectors oh, okay tertiary sectors okay then uh, clean uh, clean city clean city so you would like a more cleaner city more uh, motorable city less traffic is what you saying sir, what's your name tarun siddharth sir tarun yes tarun sir petrol prices are uh, increasing so much sir. so they want to decrease the pre- petrol prices and uh, gas prices and all sir okay so uh, it will be you know ellar naliyume gas vande ellar nali afford panna mudiyadhu sila family nala so adu prices ellame double irukku sir adallame ink increase decrease pannanga na konjam sila family ku like so so prices of oil gas should be controlled so that's an issue for you when you go out to vote the, i would like to mention yeah. another one yes please uh, gst ku ulla vande petrol kondu varan solittu irukanga adu kondu vanda nalla irukum na okay so they should bring petrol under gst you agree somewhere all of you agree petrol should be uniform price across the country sir avurthangalukku oru mari sir adhe ha everybody has a different opinion yes ladies quickly let me ask you what are the issues that will matter to you he was asking education system is important uh, employment employment is important employment opportunity is employment one thing you would want your leader to do whoever you elect what would you want them to do for you you as a youth you as a lady you as a woman sir full freedom for everyone full freedom for everyone 
Yeah. Importantly for women. Yes, sir. For women. Yes, sir. For for women, you would like that. At at the moment, you feel that's not there. There, sir, but not sir, but not completely. Not completely there. அப்படின்னா <laughs> 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 இனி அவங்க ஒரு லிட்டருக்கு எவ்வளவு விலை சொல்றாங்களோ அதுதான் நாங்க வாங்க முடியும் சோ அதை வந்து கவர்மெண்டே வச்சிருக்கலாம் அப்படின்னு நான் ஓகே சோ பேசிக் ரிசோர்சஸ் ஷுட் நாட் பி பிரைவேட்டைஸ் வாட்டர் ஃபார் இன்ஸ்டன்ஸ் ஷுட் நாட் பி பிரைவேட்டைஸ் बिकॉज தே will then command the price and the people will uh, have to pay for government na naanga question kekka mudiyum sir but private kitta pochuna avanga enna solranga adha mattum da sir we can question the government but uh, private entities we can't question they will muscle their way through uh, point that is made anybody who has come so far evlo ella ella pandranga pracharam pandranga campaign pandranga has anybody come to you with a plan for coimbatore okay ellaru prachara pandranga oru party e solli da pandranga le thavara naanga enna pannuven solli yaarume pandradilla andha party adu pannanga le pannalaya abdi maridha sol solranga okay so what the other did or didn't so it's always pointing fingers at the other not with a clear plan at least that's what they believe not with a clear plan of what they themselves their party that leader would also do for the city of coimbatore or for the people of coimbatore agree disagree yes sir huh? yes sir, huh? yes, sir. இதுவரை யாராவது ஹேஸ் எனிபடி கம் வித் இவர்கிட்ட ஒரு பிளான் இருக்கு சரி இவருக்கு ஓட் போடலாம் அந்த மாதிரி யாரும் வந்து டி டி சி எனிபடி சோ ஃபார் நோ படி எவ்ரிபடி சேங் ஓட் ஃபார் மீ பட் தேர் நாட் டெலிங் யூ வை இஸ் தட் வாட் யூர் ஃபீலிங் எனக்கு ஓட் போடுவேன்னு சொல்றாங்க பட் எதுக்கு ஓட் போடணும்னு அது சொல்றது இல்லை கோயம்புத்தூர் <laughs> 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 Singa Ramchandran 36 years old Annamalai K Annamalai is 39 years old so both under 40 so youngsters in politics is that something which is encouraging yes. ha ha it is encouraging great they all have an exam to go for and that's why they are a little tense but thank you very much thank you all of you will vote right vote podunga illa vote podunga illa so please look at the camera and say everybody please vote together 1 2 3 come turn around and look at the camera here and let's all say my vote my right 1 2 3 by what my way my way thank you thank you so much boys and girls thank you so much thank you all the best for your exams thank you thank you thank you is uh, mr sp velumani former minister in the tamil nadu government and also the currently the mla velumani sir wanna come how do you see the chances here in kovai eppadi paakringa tamil kovai nadalamandrathile vetri vetpalaraga anna timuka avudiya vetpalar singe ramachandran avargal vetri urudi yenendral inge nikkakudi vetpalar illa timuka vetpalar indraik paathina anna timuka la mayaraga maavadja irundhu vetri vetri drogam pannittu indraik vande அங்க போயிருக்கார் திமுக திமுக எத்தனையோ பேர் இருக்காங்க கஷ்டப்படுறவங்களுக்கு வாய்ப்பு கொடுக்கல அதே போல அண்ணாமலை கரூர்ல இருந்து வெற்றி வாய்ப்பு இழந்து சட்டமன்றத்தில் இங்க வந்து நிக்கிறார் ஆகவே கண்டிப்பாக கோவை மாவட்டத்தில் மிகப்பெரிய வளர்ச்சி ஐம்பது ஆண்டுகள் இல்லாத வளர்ச்சியை நம்ம கொடுத்திருக்கிறோம் சாலைகள் பாலங்கள் கூட்டுக்குண்டி திட்டம் ஆறு புதிய கல்லூரி தாலுக்கா என்று அதிகமான திட்டங்களை கொடுத்திருக்கிறோம் ஆகவே மிகப்பெரிய வளர்ச்சியை கொடுத்திருக்கிறோம் கோவை மாவட்டம் மக்கள் முழுமையாக எங்களது வெற்றி வேட்பாளர் ராமச்சந்திரன் அவர்களுக்கு கண்டிப்பாக வாய்ப்பளிப்பார்கள் வெற்றி உறுதி அதாவது ராமச்சந்திரன் வெற்றி உறுதி செகண்ட் பிளேஸ் திமுக தேர்ட் பிளேஸ் அண்ணாமலை பிஜேபி அப்படி தேர்ட் பிளேஸ் பிஜேபி நீங்க சொல்றீங்க சீசன் பாலிட்டிஷியன் லைக் யூ பேக்கிங் சம்படி ஆஸ் யங் ஆஸ் சிங்கை ராமச்சந்திரன் கோயம்புத்தூருக்கு வந்து என்ன விஷன் அண்ட் இது வந்து இங்க ரிசல்ட் இந்த வருஷம் தேர்ட்டி நைன் சீட்ஸ் நீங்க லோக்சபால தமிழ்நாடுல பாக்குறது நேஷனல் பாலிட்டிக்ஸ்ல என்ன சேஞ்ச் வர போறதுக்கு நான் கேட்கிறேன் உங்ககிட்ட அதாவது இது வந்து தமிழ்நாடு ஒரிசா ஆந்திரா எல்லாம் எப்பவுமே பிரைம் மினிஸ்டர் கேண்டிடெட் எல்லாம் சொல்றது இல்ல இங்க வந்து தமிழ்நாட்டுடைய நலன் தான் பிரைம் மினிஸ்டர் வேட்பாளர் தமிழ்நாட்டுடைய நலன் பிரைம் மினிஸ்டர் வேட்பாளர் என்ன பண்ணாலும் 
அதாவது எங்களுடைய எம்பிகள் வந்து பதினாலுல முப்பத்தி ஏழு பேர் இருந்தாங்க காவிரி மேலாண்மை வாரியம் அமைக்காம இருந்த போது பாரதிய ஜனதா கட்சி கூட்டணி கூட இருந்தோம் இருபத்தி ரெண்டு நாட்கள் நாங்க வந்து நாடாளுமன்றத்தை முடக்கணும் அப்படி தமிழ்நாட்டுடைய உரிமைகளும் தேவையான திட்டங்களும் கேட்டு பெறுவோம் எங்களுக்கு பிரதமர் வேட்பாளர் முக்கியம் இல்ல தமிழ்நாட்டுடைய நலன் தான் முக்கியம் ஆகவே ராமச்சந்திரனை வெற்றி உறுதி தாமரை ரெட்டலைய விட்டுருக்க கூடாதுன்னு சொல்றீங்களா ரெட்டலதா வெற்றி செகண்ட் வந்து திமுக தேடுதான் ஏன்னா வந்து ரியாலிட்டி அதாவது பாரதிய ஜனதா கட்சி வந்து மத்தியில இருக்கலாம் வடக்கில் இருக்கலாம் தமிழ்நாட்டை பொறுத்த அளவுக்கு ஒரு மூன்றரை சதவீதம் மூன்று சதவீத ஓட்டு தான் இருக்கு பாரதிய ஜனதா கட்சி ஆகவே கண்டிப்பாக இருக்கிற சூழ்நிலையில் அந்நாட்டு கூட கூட்டணி வச்சு காட்டித்தான் நாலு எம்எல்ஏ ஜெயிச்சாங்க போன முறை ஆகவே கண்டிப்பாக மூன்றாவது இடம் தான் இங்க அண்ணாமல ஆகவே வெற்றி அண்ணா திமுக நன்றி தேங்க்யூ ரொம்ப நன்றி சோ தட் வாஸ் மிஸ்டர் எஸ் பி வேலுமணி தேர் Sweltering heat hot on the campaign trail just off the truck and into his car and I've got uh, the 36 year old uh, Singai G Ramchandran with me now uh, how's the mood and how's the feeling the moon is amazing the feel is good already it looks like uh, every one or wherever we go they are like you're going to win you're going to win you're going to win and all the pl- public on the way that they're showing two leaves two leaves two leaves so it's it's very good it's very possible to this is also a victory sign so one wonders if it is your party sign or if it is victory but how do you see the covid dynamics now you've been part of the ai dmk from the time uh, you decided not to go for pursue your career and you joined selvi j jalalitha's team in the it department if i remember correctly now, how have things changed from then to now i would say uh, from 2016 to 21 uh, during our tenure phenomenal growth to coimbatore mm. people were able to see visible growth in terms of bridges in terms of roads in terms of airport expansion work that we initiated lot of such initiatives in desilting lakes and uh, the smart city schemes so overall there was a visible growth people are very happy that's why we were able to win uh, 10 mlas uh, so in the last three elections if you look at it all mlas were from us except like during one election one mla from first one dmk so people of coimbatore it's 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 a fort of aidmk they they celebrate aidmk because we deliver result we just don't talk like dmk mm. so now that's the reason the reception is really good and uh, i am uh, as a representative of my party i am planning to do the same mm. uh, once elected well, the, it was upa versus the nda or it was uh, bjp versus admk this time it's a it's a it's a triconot fight you've got admk dmk and the bjp now does that not change the dynamics in a largely urban grouping actually in social media it could be 3 4 5 any corner fight it doesn't matter on ground it is not upa versus nda or anything it is aidmk versus dmk there are two strong uh, regional parties which are fighting head on head and so you're saying there is no bjp there is no bjp here based on the track record that uh, we have so far the the, the the vote percentage that they have got so far based on that i'm saying that there is no bjp and uh, uh, on ground also if you look at it you can only, i'm sure you'll you'll be traveling across tamil nadu there is no bjp you know, one, one would have thought that uh, it's two youngsters who have given up their own glowing careers who are like logger heads uh, compared to a former mayor it, you would say it's an admk versus bjp and somewhere the admk and eps has perhaps made it personal because of what happened with the nda alliance i would not say it's the same two youngsters have given up the career i before even i i, I want to join iim amdabad i want to reach out to honorable amma then one, one of my ex boss he was from iim kolikot he said why can't you prepare for cat crack and then say you don't want to take a job you want to reach her and work for her it might reach her and she will give good opportunities to youngsters and that is the reason i started preparing for cat in 2010 i prepared for 3 years i was i thought i'll get into some new iims but god's grace i got into iim amdabad i went there learned hindi started in election became the general secretary then came back opted out of placements and then nothing happens one fine day i was watching a movie and suddenly uh, it's all over the news i was appointed as the secretary of idm kit ming so there's a huge difference between uh, me and him uh, he wanted to become i don't know whatever it is he con- he was there and he was serving he was earning and then the letter uh, some letter he gave and i think that's for different reason for me personally from the age of 16 17 i'm very clear 
every small decision personal or anything for that matter i mm. aligned with this one single career goal i wanted to become a politician and i wanted to serve people and create a positive impact very simple till the end of my life till the last breath that is the only thing that is why i did not take placements i started my startup i struggled hard one failed two little it took off third took off well became economically sustainable so there is some standard income for my family i can invest my time my help wife is helping me so every possible thing in my life is aligned to this so i am so i and him are not the same your your campaign pitch has been a mayor who did nothing for coimbatore uh, an import from karur and someone who's done a lot for singanallur what's this logic because he was a mayor so it's been like so many years he did nothing for people right visibly or data wise nothing So Anna Malai was the president for three years. He met Modi multiple times, but he could have. Uh, he said hundred things he's going to do now. At least one thing, if he could have done, because he their party was in power. He was the state president. He he meets Modi often. He did not do. So now they are promising so many things, both the candidates, because they want to win. All their focus is in MP and MLA ticket. On the contrary, I'm not an MLA or an MP. I've been running a free people service center in Singanallur area for the past five and a half years. I take my salary, pay tax. With the remaining amount, I spend almost eighty thousand to one lakh every month. I've employed two people. So far, twenty-five thousand people have uh, families have benefited with one lakh plus free services. Hmm. We don't charge them anything. I could have invested that in mutual funds or bought gold, or I could have invested in land or paid my any other EMIs or anything for that matter. I'm saying I did not do so because the objective here for me is to serve people. I thought one day if I become an MLA MP, what will I do? I wrote a couple of things. This was the first point. I thought, why should I not do this? Why should I wait for? Uh, to, no, but if the uh, but uh, on, let me finish. But other two people, no, they did not do anything because the objective for them is I want to become an MLA. Even if I did not get an opportunity this time, till my last uh, breath, I would have conduct uh, run this office because the objective here is to serve people. But the ADMK this time around has also made some questionable alliances. Units like the SDPI are also part of your group. The other aspect is that when the DMK went about abusing Sanatan Dharma, the ADMK kept quiet. Here, I saw you going, stepping into temples, paying your respects. So then, why keep silent when somebody is, you know, abusing faith, and also why ally with entities who are dodgy and whose own parent organizations stay banned in our country? See, BJP, DMK, both of them use religion to divide people and get votes. I am two hundred percent against it. And in Coimbatore also, when Modi came last time, he went on a rally and he went and garlanded that uh, bombast uh, thing, which we want to forget. I don't know why the Prime Minister of a country. There are so many things to celebrate about Coimbatore. He is going and doing it. And again, DMK, they they uh, they don't uh, uh, wish for Diwali or any Hindu festivals. They only appeal to the minorities. We, I personally, and our party does not like all those things because we don't want people to be divided for our benefits, self benefits. We are a secular party. We respect all religions. We give, uh, we uh, we respect everyone's opinions, and we voice out everybody. We are very inclusive, from honourable Amma to uh, Ada Padir, everybody, all of us, and uh, and that's the reason uh, we are inclusive. And I I I hate the fact that they they want to divide people for this one. Look at the hijab issue. What happened in Karnataka? Mm. people are fighting they want to like kind of milk votes out of it which is wrong no but in this case i'm not even questioning iuml or any other uh, party but especially the sdpi where there has been open criticism even when the congress party sought its support so why is the admk aligning is that not an issue and secondly all right you don't want to be divisive but to be assertive or to be proud of your own origins there's a different thing when somebody is abusing some faith at that time also why remain silent that's a question yeah. no 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 so Udayanidhi uh, Stalin, he is incapable. He doesn't know what he talks, and we don't take him seriously. He uh, makes a joke out of himself. Suddenly, he'll come with a brick and say there is no aims. What is BJP doing, or what is this party doing? Uh, but when we are, they were there inside the parliament. They did not question or do in, nothing, right? And then he says, uh, "Hindi teri ad pora." I don't want to learn Hindi. I don't know Hindi. And then what he connects Kelo India. He brings Modi, which is, and then he distributes Hindi movies. He does all those things. We don't take him seriously. And in in Tamil Nadu, we are uh, very rational. We are very progressive. We keep our beliefs to ourselves. We respect others' beliefs. We don't talk unnecessarily in public and hurt others' feelings. Hmm. my final question this is also a sizable naidu population or a telugu population along with the you know kerala or malayali uh, malayalam population because malayali population because of the border regions so telugu telsunara malayalam areyo 
నాకు తెలుగు తెలుసు మేరకు హిందీ అత ఐ నో ఇంగ్లీష్ నాకు తమిళ్ తెలియ బట్ మలయాళం మనసు లాగదు ఐ డోంట్ నో బట్ యు ఫీల్ యుల్ హావ్ సపోర్ట్ ఆల్ అక్రాస్ అండ్ విల్ యు ఫినిష్ నంబర్ 1 ఎస్పి వెలుమణి సర్ వాస్ ఏడిఎంకె విల్ బి నంబర్ 1 సింగర్ రామ్ చంద్రన్ ఇస్ గోయింగ్ టు బి ది ఎంపి ఫ్రమ్ కోయంబత్తూర్ ఆర్ యు కాన్ఫిడెంట్ ఆఫ్ కోర్స్ yes because you have done so much of work for people and uh, look at like before four days in zulur i went to 70 points on a single day i had 20 minutes to have lunch i'm almost be- sleeping only 3 3 and a half hours the last 25 days i lost 5 to 7 kgs very passionate about i'm living my dream i want to take this win and show okay this guy has created a positive impact representing aid and well, right on cue ladies and gentlemen from one spot to the other we just got to get off and we've got to let singai ji ramachandran go all the very best thank you for speaking with thank us thank you so much thanks so nandri vanakkam nandri vanakkam Well early evening ladies and gentlemen and we are at Senjeri Malai this is about 60 kilometers from Coimbatore city itself roughly there about and that's the temple of uh, Lord Muruga there that's the Senjeri Senjeri Malai and uh, what's interesting is on the foreground there uh, or uh, for us our background it's Andamalai again and this is a crowd that has just turned up to listen to him this is rural coimbatore about 20% of the voter base comes from rural coimbatore in the entire coimbatore lok sabha but with me are two gentlemen unique stories rajesh is with me he's come from the us for one month to work with team annamalai and i've got satish with me and yeah i'm right here uh, my uh, my from the home, from my hometown i'm about 20 kilometers from my hometown and i'm working for this guy we want to change he is one of the most educated uh, guy uh, an ips officer who quit his job and he joined the politics so we we want we know he is going to make a change and he is going so to give him some so your work is voluntary voluntary we don't get anything we don't we just behind him to behind him, him all 24 into 7 now you've come from the us why have yes, you done that uh, anand you know i mean i'm not the first guy uh, to do this uh, approximately there are about uh, anywhere between 150 and 175 people who have left their full time jobs for a month to work on the ground here and uh, this is an unbelievable experience here um, this is an inspiring leader that this state has seen in the last 100 years why why is annamalai special avaru yen special annamalai annamalai asundu nermai ekkraru ha avudaiya thunichal ha avan nermai paathu dhaan engala vandukran நேர்மை பார்த்து வந்திருக்கீங்களா நீங்க வந்து கொஞ்சம் சொல்லுங்க ஏன் அண்ணாமலை ஏன் ஸ்பெஷல் ஏன் இவ்வளவு கூட்டம் வந்திருக்கா ஒரு நல்ல வேட்பாளர் இருக்காங்க நேர்மையான மனிதனுக்காக ஒரு விவசாயிகள் வந்திருக்கிறாரு படித்த மனிதன் முதல் முறையே நல்ல கிரிக்கெட் காய் ஹூஸ் கம் இன் டு politics படித்த மனிதன் வந்து ஆட்சில வந்திருக்காங்க தட்ஸ் வாட் ஹி இஸ் saying ஹி இஸ் saying நேர்மையான ஹானஸ்ட் and uh, upfront and uh, straight in your face he's got nothing to hide that's what makes him special uh, இந்த கூட்டம் வந்து ஓட்ல சேருமா கண்டிப்பாங்க ஒரேமா <laughs> we when this guy annamalai he just came into the picture into the mainstream hardly 3 years back right in 3 hmm. years see the vote bank see where where we have gone where what changes he have made he made some promises which is he is going to keep and we know it is going to come into practice right. no so, from it not but, but here's the thing vote share does not mean seat share increase no, in vote share yeah. absolutely not so here is here is the game plan okay so the goal for this election is to move our vote share percentage from anywhere between 15 and 23 is what the six big surveys have given the moment we move from 15 to roughly about 20 if we can move 20 that's when the tectonic shift is going to happen in tamil nadu vote share when it moves 20 and we wait for two more years and in 2026 this 20 will become somewhere between 23 and 25 when it becomes 23 25 we are talking about 25 to 30 seats that we will get as soon as bjp gets 25 to 30 seats both these other traditional parties that you mentioned either dmk or the admk will not be able to form the government on their own mm. at that point we are looking at something either bjp is going to rule this state on its own or it will be a joint uh, government just like how we saw in uh, karnataka where we will share two years each two years each so that's where it becomes a force to reckon with but what are his chances in kovai i can tell you what its chances are there were two surveys that were pretty close i don't know if you are familiar with the loyola survey mm. 
Loyola survey in its history has never gone wrong. Loyola survey has given Annamalai in Coimbatore constituency 38.4 percentage. Okay, and the next one is followed by uh, the DMK candidate with about 33. Point two percent, eight percentage, and the five percent gap. It's a huge gap, and we are very confident he is going to make it. And if he cannot make it, it is going to be absolute loss for Coimbatore, because Coimbatore has got miles and miles to go, and it's going to be on the map of India. It's got huge potential. I was speaking with SP Mail Velumani uh, earlier in the day, and he said it will be ADMK one, DMK two, and BJP three. That's his prediction. Uh, what would you say to that? I don't think so. I think uh, Velumani has to, you know, get back to his, uh, you know, he has to study the market. You know, it's totally different what he has predicted and what All is right. going to happen in the last last few weeks. As, as much as he has a, another choice to say otherwise, yeah. and uh, just so I, I'll say it with uh, good intentions because Singai Ramchandran is also my good friend. Yes, and He's I also have, an educated I, bloke. Yeah. Absolutely, uh, I've I've met him in the US. I've, you know, I know him very well. But when it comes to the right choice. There is only one guy and it's Annamalai IPS, the Singham that we are waiting. Well, supporters of the BJP, supporters of Annamalai believe he is the right choice. Uh, you can see the turnout. This is unprecedented. It's organic turnout. That's what people are telling us. It's not something that this is curated, cultivated crowds because it's an ongoing road show and people have been waiting for a while. Gentlemen, all the best. Thank you very, very much for speaking with us. Well, we'll see. We'll check with Annamalai too in a short while from now. Ahead of the polls, Prime Minister Modi gave the most explosive interview of the year to ANI. PM addressed a slew of topics and issues like the electoral bonds row, alleged misuse of central agencies like ED and CBI, and opposition's continuous questioning of the credibility of EVMs. Attacking the Congress party, Prime Minister said that the election commission reforms were brought by the Modi government, and before that, those close to one family were made election commissioners who later got Rajya Sabha seats and also ministries. The Prime Minister also said that Congress knows that it will lose in the upcoming polls and that is why they are raising doubts about EVMs because it is just an excuse to explain their loss. The opposition has hit back at Prime Minister accusing him of lying to the people of the nation. We talk transparency, so Vipaksh says that ED, CBI, IT, all the leaders of the election commission are also connected to the election commission. All the leaders of the BJP are also connected to the election commission. और लेवल प्लेइंग फील्ड है ही नहीं मतलब दे ऑलरेडी मेकिंग द ग्राउंड की इलेक्शन जो है वो फेयर नहीं हो सकता इसमें एक भी कानून मेरी सरकार ने नहीं बनाया चाहे ईडी हो सीबीआई हो चाहे इलेक्शन कमीशन ऊपर से हमने तो इलेक्शन कमीशन में सुधार किए थे आज इलेक्शन कमीशन बनता है तो ऑपोजिशन भी उसमें होता है पहले तो प्रधानमंत्री एक फाइल पे साइन करके इलेक्शन कमीशन बना देता था और जो उनके परिवार के साथ निकट जुड़े थे ऐसे ऐसे लोग इलेक्शन कमीशन बने कमिश्नर बने थे ऐसे लोग इलेक्शन कमिश्नर बने थे जो वहां से निकलने के बाद राज्यसभा के मेंबर बने उनकी सरकार के मिनिस्टर बने ऐसे इलेक्शन कमिश्नर बने थे जो कांग्रेस के बाद में कैंडिडेट बने और इसलिए हम उस लेवल पे प्ले नहीं कर सकते तो हमारा लेवल प्ले फील्ड हो ही नहीं सकता हम ऐसे बन ही नहीं सकते हम अच्छे रास्ते पर जाना चाहते हैं हम उस रास्ते पर जाना नहीं चाहते दूसरी बात है आखिर ईडी सीबीआई कैसे बनी ईडी वगैरह का आप देखेंगे या इलेक्शन कमीशन का अपने एक कहावत है नाच न जाने आंगन टेढ़ा और इसलिए कभी ई का बहाना निकालेंगे कभी मूलतः पराजय के लिए वो कुछ रीजनिंग अभी से सेट इन दिस केस मेनी वुड से दैट मोमेंट यू मेक इट अ थ्री वे फाइट डीएमके एडीएमके बीजेपी प्लस देयर एलाइज हाउ एवर यू टू से यू आर स्प्लिटिंग द वोट्स एंड दैट विल ओनली वर्क टू द एडवांटेज ऑफ द incumbent that is a dmk how would you see that that's a very traditional political way of thinking sir politics changes so fast 1991 one of the worst elections for dmk because dmk won two seats two 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 assembly members uh, assembly if you take 
DMK's vote share was about 20, 21, 22 percent, sir. 2014 parliament, one of the worst elections for DMK, got routed literally. DMK's vote share was about 22. So I believe DMK's vote share is somewhere between 20 to 22 as a party. As a party, that is what they bring to the table. That is their cadres vote. That is why DMK, every time they stitch a larger alliance. They want Congress, they want this, they want caste-based party. They want to make it more than 31, 32, 33. And I believe the two Dravidian parties in Tamil Nadu, they are between 20 to 22 percent, each of them at different points of time. So you are saying overall about 44 percent votes it. is with the Dravidian parties. That's it. So there is a clear 55 percent clearly that is against the Dravidian parties, which a newcomer like Vijay Kant will have a certain cushion of 10 percent for some time. Kamala Hassan will have some 6-7 percent for some time. A person like Seaman will have a couple of percentage, 5-6 percent for some time. So these are very floating votes. A newcomer it goes, it waits. Again, newcomer comes, it goes. So you see this, this is a, this is a voting base that keeps shifting. Now this 55 percent, now I believe it is more than 55 percent, it is waiting for a stable third party. He doesn't want a party that comes comes in the horizon, be there for a certain point of time, vanishes. This 55% will decide. So why am I bothered about splitting votes, sir? So my head and our head, the party is very clear. 55% of vote is outside the loop. That, of course, 20% might vote for one Dravidian party because he thinks this Dravidian party is bad, I'll vote for this guy. That is the alternate model of Tamil government. But I believe that 55% are not Dravidian party's hardcore voters. They're waiting. That is what elections have told us at different points of time. So you are saying that it will split four ways or three ways. 100%. And anybody who gets closer to 30% in this three-way fight gets the mandate. The question before me is, can we create the same magic even if the PM is not contesting? Hmm. That is what the whole toil and hard work are. If PM is contesting one of the seats, why this hard work and toil? Because then that's when the exponential benefit that the BJP needs in Tamil Nadu to breach this wall... It will come. There is, a, there, is a, there is a sentiment which says if the PM is so intent on uh, his commitment to Tamil Nadu and the South beyond Karnataka, then he should contest from here. And 2024 is the best time. I'm, I'm asking you. You are you're planning I, something very big no, no, in Palada. So. I, I, my personal belief, sir, people of Tamil Nadu has gone, gone beyond that measure of only if somebody is contesting here, then probably I, I know that that person is trusting my soil and my people. Hmm. Now the emotional connect with PM is so deep. You, you see, sir, the 11 day, 11 day Anistan and PM did. Yeah. I was coming last, to that, Ram Mandir. How last, much of an impact? Huh? Okay, please. Sorry, sir. The last two days of his Anistanam happened in Tamil Nadu. Hmm. And like many Karikartas, I also had the privilege of watching the whole thing happening very closely as a Karikarta from the outside, what is happening. And that, I would say, is something that has moved the needle. Probably we all say the last is strong camel's back. You put that last one, the camel will break. Kasi Tamil Sangam, Saurashtra Tamil Sangam, PM doing everything for Tamil Nadu culture, so taking the language across, Thirukural, of course many things. But that, so you could see the toil in his face. A person coming here, fasting, sleeping in the floor in Rameshwaram, going to, uh, sleeping in the floor in Rameshwaram, going to uh, Sri Rangam, present in the Kambar Mantapam, which, no, which no, no Tamil politician or Dravidian politician cared about. The whole thing, what we what we talk now, we believe probably it is the last strand camel's back. Of course, Ram Temple is a big thing in Tamil Nadu. It is. Politicians will say, oh, Ram Temple and Ayodhya, how is it going to benefit us? Do you think it is going to benefit us? No, sir, it is not about you build one temple and the votes is going to come. So, BJP doesn't believe when you switch on the switch here, lights will glow here. It is not that theory, sir. The theory is two things. One, Ram is so connected to Tamil Nadu as is connected to the rest of our Bharat. Because this state, what has happened, very purposefully, very deviously, very deviously. Kambaramayanam, if you look at, you go to all small towns of Tamil Nadu, you will have a Kambaramayanam club. I don't think, I don't think any other god has got a club. Or any other, a book that is written for a particular god has got a club. So, and if you look at Kambaramayanam, it is across the world, some of the finest Kambaramayanam speakers reside in Tamil Nadu. Now, why? Very purposefully, the Dravidian politicians decided... This has to be given a stop. This cannot allow to penetrate. People cannot have Kambarayam, Kamayam conference like a weekend thing. Or people cannot do this uh, chanting everything. That is when very deviously they, they, chappled, they brought a chapel mala to Lord Rama. They said Lord Rama is an outsider. Why Lord Rama is so viciously, in the Dravidian politicians mind, so viciously treated as an outsider. So viciously because they knew Kambaramayanam 
and the impact Kambaramayanam resonates with Tamil people and the way you see the Kambaramayanam clubs in a small town, they very carefully, very deviously said, let us stop this whole thing, let us portray him as an outsider. I am very, very sad and sorry that when, when the whole thing happened, a counter-cultural political movement could have started in a matter of months. If there is an opposite counter-cultural movement then, they could have literally stopped it. There was a huge gap given till Purashi Talavar MGR came and openly he said that, that he is a pro-Hindu. Yeah. Then Madam Jailalitha came. So that gap was filled by these devious people. Now we are breaching that gap after many, many decades now to say, look, Ram Temple, okay, let us talk about Rama now. Of course, Ramana Swami has got a connect. Of course, Srirangam has got a connect because the Urchav Murthy inside is a personal god of Lord Rama which yeah. was gifted to Vibhishana, it came. This are two, sir. We have... This are two, sir. We have 150 Lord Rama temples in Tamil Nadu which are 1000 years old. And this Yatra, we have visited about 30-32 of it. You go to Dharmaburi, Dharmaburi, there is a place where Rama did, did Tirtha, he did a Shiva Puja for Lord Shiva, there is a temple. Sir, of all places, you go to Arani, yeah. Putra Kamatishwarar, where Lord Rama's father, the great king, he came, he did a tapasa because he wanted a children. He did a heaven. Lord Rama was born because in Arani, in the Putra Kamatishwarar temple, his father did a tapas. Then you go, you, you skip one district, you go near Tanjavur, you go to Suryanar temple. When Jadayu, for Jadayu, the last rite was performed by Lord Rama in Tanjavur. So you have a Jadayu Gundam there. So it, it is beyond my mind how this so-called a politician for about two decades, they very deviously covered everything. So let me ask you, is it the Ram Mandir, Ram Lala, Pran Patishtha in Ayodhya? Or is it the Prime Minister's Bhakti and Anushthanam that you think has, as you said, the last straw on the camel's back? So we are very emotional people and Tamil Nadu is a state that highly reverses a saint. That, that reverse that reverse a person who has forsaked everything for doing a moral duty. This is a, this is a land of Nayanmas and Alvars. Nayanmas and Alvars are not names, sir. Hmm. They, are, they are saints because they have forsaked a lot of things to achieve a, achieve a morality in the society. And Thiruvalluvar, you talk all the big names here. So, we don't treat them as scholarly, intellectual. This is a state that reverse, reverse the detachment part. The state always loves somebody who is detached. And Modiji's sense of detachment. Of course, a sense of detachment in everything he does, but very specially, the 11 day Anustanam he did, absolute sense of detachment, sacrificing food, the way he behaved in Rameshwaram when he stayed in the mutt, where the Swami came out and next day he gave an interview that SPG people have removed the cart and he slept on the floor. Yeah, and, 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 and you see, you see Ramana Swami temples, sir, he went to all the, all the Tirtha, Tirtha Sestra, the Tirtha well, where he himself poured water, did the holy dip, he respected the tradition of that land. He went to the last point, Arichal Munai. He went there, stood there with reverence, bowed down. Then, then all the, the many important things the PM did. Kambara, Kambara Mantapa, where he said, in our national convention, PM said, the moment in his mind, when he sat in that Kambara Mantapam, listening to Kambara Ramayana, from some of the greatest speakers in Tamil Nadu, he said that is the moment he will carry till his last breath. He, he particularly recalled this occasion in our national convention. He said that will be in my blood. So this is something that Tamil people know, this RPM is a person of detachment. So this Ram temple, yes, of course it is an occasion, sir. But the way a person took his responsibility and did Prana Pradishta, this is mood mountains in Tamil Nadu. So will you say, final two, three questions, I know you have positive time, it's a late in the night conversation that we are having with Mr. Annamalai, but he still has got engagements into the VRs. So let me ask you this, is this election now in Tamil Nadu, between those who want to eradicate Sanatana Dharma and those who want to bring back the temple culture and to free the temples from the stranglehold of government. Is this now, that's how you would you draw this? So we have, uh, we have unbuilt the cat and we have let the cat roaming in the streets now. So this was a touchy topic which nobody touched for a long time. And we have touched a lot of things in the Yatra time including uh, some of the words that is put outside the temple, what BJP is going to do about it what BJP is going to do about HR and see the plan and everything, sir. Mm. Now, even Periyar statue out at Sri Ranga, we, we, sir, we'll we will it take out. it respectfully to a common place and we mm. don't want demean to anybody. But that doesn't have any provision to stand outside a temple. And when we said it, a common man, even many from the Dravidian party, they said this is the right approach. We are waiting for somebody like that. 
and this is the right approach let people go to a common place that whoever wants go on garland but in a in a place in a place where faith is worshiped let us not hurt that starting from this sir uh, hrnc the mismanagement the, the large large amount of bunglement they have done hrnc is down. happening even in your uh, previous avatar as ips where you served in karnataka also this bungled was bungled you are seeing in karnataka hmm. uh, some of the greatest disservice they are doing in that holy land we are seeing sir sir now i would say a combination of sanadana dharma eradication which not only udayanidhi stalin spoke which also the dmk government partly was doing rama prana pradishta sir we had to go to supreme court knock the door in the midnight get our petition listed at 10:30 in the morning get an order at 10:40 serve it to dgp by about 11:15 then make sure the prana pradishta went 11 11:30 even for the finance minister madam nirmala sitaraman who was inside that temple that doesn't have anything to do with hr and she she was prevented from watching so people are watching it and they know okay i don't want this people and of course bjp has got a plan of course this is an important issue sir but we put it in a way that is understandable to a common man a common person has to understand that is very important not the intellectual class a person who is in a village who has got a small deity who is very concerned that that the, that the way he worships his kula devata temple over centuries should not be affected now hrnc is entering that because hrnc act says even in kula devata temple there is a dispute i will come inside yeah. so overall i would say sir this election sanadana dharma eradication and stranglement of government temples is going to play a major role in the way people people vote and make their choice of voting hmm. but that could also polarize the vote those who believe that you are talking only hindutva temples the others may not come you i are, are you okay or are you talking a language that polarizes the voter because that's another accusation that you are pushing a hindutva agenda now so you are not looking at sabka sath sir now we have to understand sir let us define hindutva let us define hindutva now i respect my muslim brother and sister i respect my christian brother and sister if somebody goes and touches their church or their mosque i'll be the first person to condemn and i say that everybody should have the same right a muslim brother and sister going to a mosque free the imam of that mosque deciding how the mosque should be run or a christian father deciding how his sunday should be uh, what kind of donation the church should get what is the kind of sacrifice offering they should do the same right i think a hindu temple should also have so if people call i'm polarizing they should get their head checked if any of the opposition party here in tamil nadu they say annamalai is polarizing i'm not doing they were only polarizing till now so what they were doing till 2024 is polarization not as and secondly sir and bjp as a party we celebrate iftar it's a party bjp tamil nadu we celebrate iftar but what we do is we invite all our muslim brothers and sisters we say let us all of us who have our faith who what we what we practice let us all celebrate each other faith by not copying each other here we have politicians who will just remove vibhuti because they want to go to a minority conference we don't do that even when we host an iftar i will be myself and i want my muslim brother and sister to be themselves because we believe this is the real value of secularism last year we hosted christmas by the official bjp our leaders came everybody came we called the fathers and celebrated so tamil nadu over a point of time the politicians believe hosting an iftar means you have to do appeasement hosting a christmas means you have to do appeasement now when we do something different it is very shocking to the established pattern of political thinking they say who is this anamali or who is this bjp who are doing hindutva which is absolutely wrong which is a thorough misunderstanding and more importantly the muslims and the christian brothers and sisters of tamil nadu like our approach mm-hmm. they say if they are so conscious about their religion they will be conscious about my religion also sunita tamil sai sondarajan as well as mr annamalai are leading this challenge for the bharatiya janata party tamil sai sondarajan is a bjp candidate from chennai south she was of course former telangana governor and she is aspiring to be a giant killer on the other hand in bengal not in the first phase but in the ensuing phases we have rekha patra the lady in the middle of your screens in the blue sari she is the bjp candidate from basihat it's very interesting viewers because she's a survivor of molestation that was conducted in sandesh khali in an organized manner 
not against just her but several other women who couldn't bring themselves to complain because of the unvarnished terror that had been unleashed by a TMC linked local leader Sheikh Shah Jahan who was finally arrested viewers after a massive manhunt that extended more than 50 days now viewers both these ladies are up against tall odds but as you know viewers from the 2019 elections those sometimes become of academic interest because the unfavored sometimes springs massive surprise Smriti Irani did it of course in Amethi against Rahul Gandhi can Tamil Sai Sondarajan and Rekha Patra do it for their party the BJP in Tamil Nadu and Bengal both have been favored by the Prime Minister both in fact the Prime Minister has campaigned for he in fact went out and called Rekha Patra the equivalent of a goddess of a goddess slaying evil let's first speak to Tamil Sai Sondarajan your excellency thank you for taking the time out I know that uh, the campaign is upon you and you've been out there every day of the week how much is the BJP's main issues on which the BJP is hoping to make a difference is the woman card. This is the first meeting of the opposition India bloc of parties. Definitely a show of strength. Bhupendra Yadav is making his uh, Lok Sabha electoral debut. Murli Dharan's candidature has rejuvenated the Congress workers and they are confident of retaining this seat. This election of 2024 is one of the toughest political challenges that the Nath family will face. A lot of excitement here on ground. We are reporting from Bridge Key, Galia. It's an interesting fight. As usual in Tamil Nadu, the women outnumber the men. But we will focus on the first time voters. The assembly elections, the BJP and JDS fought against each other tooth and nail. But today, the party workers have to be under one pandal. Tamil Sai Sondarajan as well as Mr. Annamalai are leading this challenge for the Bharatiya Janata Party. Tamil Sai Sondarajan is the BJP candidate from Chennai South. She was of course former Telangana governor and she is aspiring to be a giant killer. On the other hand in Bengal, not in the first phase but in the ensuing phases, we have Rekha Patra. The lady in the middle of your screens in the blue sari. She is the BJP candidate from Basihat. It's very interesting viewers because she's a survivor of molestation that was conducted in Sandesh Khali in an organized manner. Not against just her but several other women who couldn't bring themselves to complain because of the unvarnished terror that had been unleashed by a TMC linked local leader Sheikh Shah Jahan who was finally arrested viewers after a massive manhunt that extended more than 50 days now viewers both these ladies are up against tall odds but as you know viewers from the 2019 elections those sometimes become of academic interest because the unfavored sometimes springs massive surprise Smriti Irani did it of course in Amethi against Rahul Gandhi can Tamil Sai Sondarajan and Rekha Patra do it for their party the BJP in Tamil Nadu and Bengal both have been favored by the Prime Minister both in fact 
the Prime Minister has campaigned for. He in fact went out and called Rekha Patra the equivalent of a goddess, of a goddess slaying evil. Let's first speak to Tamil Sai Sondarajan. Your Excellency, thank you for taking the time out. I know that uh, the campaign is upon you and you've been out there every day of the week. How much is the BJP's campaign in Tamil Nadu, and I'm talking first of the overall picture, not just of your constituency, leveraging Prime Minister Modi's brand equity? And all the ministers and the national leaders... the way the Indy alliance is decrying everything to do with the uh, Hindus. ये चुनाव मीट मछली का चुनाव नहीं है ये चुनाव लोगों की जरूरतों का चुनाव है All the 25 seats in Rajasthan Lok Sabha has edge over BJP because of uh, Mr. Ashok Gehlot's welfare scheme. The objective of this election is to choose the country's leader for the next 5 years. It is to elect the country's prime minister. How do you trust a party that has given so many jumlas to this country, lied in front of the people to form government? How do you trust the BJP? There is a competition where there is no difference. The rest of the parties are going to be out of the election room and going to be out of the election. Tamil Sai Sondarajan as well as Mr. Annamalai are leading this challenge for the Bharatiya Janata Party. Tamil Sai Sondarajan is the BJP candidate from Chennai South. She was of course former Telangana governor and she is aspiring to be a giant killer. On the other hand, in Bengal, not in the first phase but in the ensuing phases, we have Rekha Patra, the lady in the middle of your screens in the blue sari. She is the BJP candidate from Basihat. It's very interesting viewers because she's a survivor of molestation that was conducted in Sandesh Khali in an organized manner. Not against just her but several other women who couldn't bring themselves to complain because of the unvarnished terror that had been unleashed by a TMC-linked local leader, Sheikh Shahjan, who was finally arrested, viewers, after a massive manhunt that extended more than 50 days. Now, viewers, both these ladies are up against tall odds. But as you know, viewers, from the 2019 elections, those sometimes become of academic interests because the unfavored sometimes springs massive surprise. Smriti Irani did it of course in Amethi against Rahul Gandhi. Can Tamil Sai Sondarajan and Rekha Patra do it for their party, the BJP in Tamil Nadu and Bengal? Both have been favored by the Prime Minister. Both, in fact, the Prime Minister has campaigned for he, in fact, went out and called Rekha Patra the equivalent of a goddess, of a goddess slaying evil. Let's first speak to Tamil Sai Sondarajan. Your Excellency, thank you for taking the time out. I know that uh, the campaign is upon you and you've been out there every day of the week. How much is the BJP's campaign in Tamil Nadu, and I'm talking first of the overall picture, not just of your constituency, leveraging Prime Minister Modi's brand equity? Good evening, you're watching Brass Tax with me, Poonam Burde. Tomorrow is Ram Navmi and while the country is ready to celebrate this occasion, the stage is set for a showdown in West Bengal. On the eve, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee went head-to-head -head over who was stoking religious passions. 
The Prime Minister, who addressed two rallies in Bengal today, accused the state government of blocking Hindus from celebrating their festival. On the other hand, Mamta Banerjee hit out at the BJP and warned people to not get trapped in any kind of provocation. The political slugfest comes a day after Calcutta High Court granted permission to the Vishwa Hindu Parishad and other organizations for a procession specifically in Howrah, the same place that witnessed widespread violence and arson on Ram Navmi last year. And it wasn't just last year that we've seen violence in West Bengal. Unfortunately, that trail continued a few years before that as well. Last year, a BJP MLA 